Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ebenezer. This week we're looking at a story where Jesus tells us all about the temple being destroyed. And we also have a craft where we make our own temples. But before we get into any of that, it's time for a song. And it's called The King Has Arrived by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. Son, the King of the world, so I will praise the one who keeps his promises to Israel. For you've been merciful, just as you said to our families long ago. He's here. One, two, three! The King has arrived. Go and tell everyone the God's promises through him will be fulfilled. He's arrived. He'll win the victory and save the world. He's arrived. The king of the universe. The king of the universe. The king of the universe is here. Well, what a great song. Now it's time for our Bible story where Jesus talks about the destruction of the temple. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, Watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, don't be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, 
and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment, in fulfilment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for women and mothers! There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, Stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the leaves and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with partying and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives, and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Well, what a great Bible story. Now we're going to see if we can figure out what it means for us. And to do that, we're going to need the help of our feathered friend, Zelda. Let's dive into the passage. What does Jesus mean when he talks about all this destruction and war? There's a lot of complicated things going on in this passage. I wouldn't worry if you don't understand most of it. There's quite a bit that's very difficult to understand on your first reading. A lot of the battles and destruction that Jesus is talking about, most people think happened thousands of years ago, when Jesus, just after Jesus was alive. He's warning his disciples about a lot of those bad things and saying that they're going to happen and advising them to stay alert and faithful despite all of that. Why does Jesus say not to worry? Well, Jesus says that even though the disciples are going to be put on trial and asked lots of questions about following Jesus, which would be very scary, they don't need to worry about what they will say. This is because Jesus promises that he will give them words of wisdom when they need it and words so wise that no one will be able to contradict them. This would have been very encouraging for the disciples and should be very encouraging to us too. We can always pray to Jesus and ask him to help us when we don't know what to say, when people ask us about him too. Why does Jesus say we should be careful of our hearts being weighed down? Jesus also says in this passage that we shouldn't focus on or worry about things of this world so much that they trouble us and make us really anxious. It's a message he often gives us, not to get carried away with worldly things, but instead to fix our eyes on God instead. This time Jesus is warning his disciples because they, they won't know when these things are about to happen, and if they're unprepared then they'll be caught off guard. What does this mean for our lives? Although where we live we don't have to worry about 
war and devastation in this way, there are still many Christians around the world who are persecuted and mistreated because of their faith, and they live in dangerous places with wars going on. We should remember to pray for these people and be thankful for our own situation. And we should also take away from this passage that the most important thing is to continue to rely on God and have faith in him, because he will never let us down, even when the world's really difficult. What are we going to learn about next time? Next time, we look at the Last Supper. Now it's time for the memory verse. Today's memory verse comes from Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37. And it says this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. So let's say that again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Now it's time for the craft. Today, we're making our very own temple. For today's craft, you will need some thick plain paper, some cardboard, any kind of cardboard works fine, two toilet roll tubes, some kitchen foil, some scissors, remember to always be careful with scissors and ask it out for help if you need, a stapler, remember to also be careful when using these and also ask an adult for help if you need. You could also use tape instead for the parts that need a stapler. And finally, a marker pen. Now let's get cracking with our temple craft. First take your sheet of thick paper and a toilet roll tube and let's make a pillar for our temple. Carefully use your scissors to cut the tube almost in half, but such that one half is a bit bigger than the other. This is the half we will use. Use your hands to fold a small flap on one side of the toilet roll tube, like I've done here. Then take your stapler, line up your tube against the bottom left corner of your paper and staple it down on the flap. Remember to be careful when using a stapler and perhaps use tape instead if you don't have an adult around to help you. Now we're going to repeat this with our other toilet roll for our other pillar. Same as before, cut it a bit bigger than half and use your fingers to fold down a flap and then staple it down onto the opposite side of your paper. Now we have two pillars for our temple. Next, we're going to use our marker pen to mark out where we want the door to go and where the shiny top of our temple is going to be. Don't worry if it's a bit messy, it'll be covered up. Next, take your cardboard and cut out a door shape, just a little, little bit bigger than the area you marked out with your pen. Then use your stapler to hold it in place. Now we need to make our shiny roof. Take your tin foil and cut out a piece that is just a bit bigger than the area you marked out at the top. When you're happy with the size, start using your stapler to fold back the sides and staple it in place. I've decided to make my bottom edge a bit wavy, but you could do yours really straight if you prefer. You might also have to fold over the top part too, if your foil is a lot bigger than your paper. Once the roof is finished, we just need to add on some detail. First use your marker pen to draw a line for the door and a couple of door handles. Then use your pen to add some detail to the pillars. How you draw this is up to you but I'm adding a mix of wavy and straight lines to make my pillars look like the kind of pillars you might see at a temple in real life. You can also use some colouring pens if you prefer. When that's all done, it's time for the finishing touch. We're going to write our memory verse from today on the temple itself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And now our temple is finished. Doesn't it look great? Well, what a great craft. Do send through any pictures of your crafts or questions to the email in the description below. But for now, it's time for another song, and it's called Show Respect to the Sun by John Hardwick. Do sing along. Come on, come on. 
running out of time now, so we're going to end in a short prayer. If you'd like to make it yours, please join in with the Amen at the end. Dear Lord, thank you that you're always faithful and we can rely on you even when things are hard. Help those who are in situations that are really difficult, facing war and poverty and famine. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all we have time for. Do tune in next time when we look at the Last Supper. But for now, that's bye from me, and it's bye from Zelda. And we'll see you in the next video.